you know, there's some powerful work being done with the Mexican American community in Austin, um, particularly around uh, the undocumented workers and, and their situation there. Uh, with us in the studio, actually, we have my friend Patty Zavala, who works with an organization called the uh, Workers Defense Project. Who I think uh, she she can tell you a little bit more about that. In here, in our studio, it's kind of like a family getting together. But um, yes, please. Uh, how are you doing today? I'm. I'm doing all right. Uh, my name is Patricia Zavala, and I'm an Austin resident. Um, I'm currently working and organizing with the Workers' Defense Project, which is um, a local grassroots membership-based organization that uh, helps to defend the rights of Austin's low-wage immigrant workers. Um, we do this through a variety of tactics, um, through educating workers about their rights in their workforce, um, organizing workers to defend their rights and to have the dignity um, and to have the courage in order to stand up for their rights. Um, we also do uh, individual advocacy to help to reclaim unpaid wages. Um, and um, we also will engage in direct actions in order to um, get back stolen wages that the employers have taken from from the workers. Most of the workers, w w what kind of work are they involved in? Um, we have workers come from um, a variety of industries, the restaurant industry, hotels, landscaping, um, and construction. Um, and Austin is, is booming right now. It's the second fastest growing city in the country. Um, in the past two years, about 11 skyscrapers have gone up. So you can just see the, the exponential growth that the city is currently undergoing. So um, construction is, is very big and it attracts a lot of um, the Hispanic community and low wage uh, workers to that to that industry. Um, so we f we found that uh, with the workers coming to us from the construction industry that they they were not only experiencing abuses in wage theft uh, where they weren't being paid the wage that they were promised or not being paid overtime or just simply getting paid zero dollars for the work that they've done um, but they were also suffering uh, egregious workplace abuses um, in, in terms of safety and health uh, very poor safety regulations, no access to water or rest, or rest breaks. Um, the most basic thing, like get, having a water break, we're being de is being denied to these workers. Um, and because of that, we've seen a, a, an extraordinary um, deaths occurring. Um, every two and a half days in the state of Texas, a construction worker dies on the work site. And these are needless deaths that are occurring, deaths uh, simply because somebody hasn't had a, a water over the eight hour workday that they're working. And in Texas, it gets extremely hot, 112 degrees working outside on top of a roof, um, just alone in, in, in the summer. Uh, in Austin, uh, seven construction workers died, um, two of them being from heat exhaustion, just not having access to water breaks. In our state, in Washington, what, what's been happening is like um, they built a um, immigration detention center in Tacoma on, on the tight flats. And there's been an effort to arrest people, um, uh, immigrants, legal or not legal, has been going on in the peninsula. That's a lot of stories about roadblocks and they're pulling people over, arresting them, and then putting them in this detention center, mainly because I guess the detention center has to justify itself. But uh, how has it been down in, in, in Texas? I mean, are they like randomly arresting people? I mean, because it started to happen here and a lot of people are really offended by it. I think a lot of what Washingtonians don't like it, but you know, what's going on in Texas? Well, if you were to ask the Austin Police Department if they're randomly arresting people um, and putting them in jail to, to soon be deported, they would say absolutely not. That's not what they're doing. All they're really doing is just cracking down on crime. Um, but the problem is that um, ICE, the Immigration and Customs Enforcement, which is um, a very, very, very powerful institution, um, has has integrated itself into our county jail so whenever anybody gets arrested uh, for uh, a small crime a misdemeanor something 
for one reason or another, they get arrested and they get put in, and they get booked into the county jails. Uh, ICE is there and they interview people that come in that look Hispanic or have a, or of color, speak don't speak the language, and pretty much I immediately identify that they are undocumented. It went in which place they put a detainer on them and they're quickly um, either removed from the country or put into one of these detention centers. Um, currently, right now in Austin, there are people mobilizing against this. Um, uh, the Austin Immigrant Rights Coalition is working on a report to demonstrate uh, the negative consequences of having ICE in the Travis County Jail and these these policies that is being I implemented and expanded by the Obama administration um, and how it's affecting the communities. Um, people, uh, I actually just experienced something two weeks ago where my friend who w was targeted um, and a prostitution sting, and he was arrested. He's an undocumented immigrant. He's been here for the last five years, a hard, hard worker. And within six days, he was deported and, and taken out of the country. So a lot of people don't really believe that this is happening and, and think that people that are here just to do their job and to work hard and make better li lives for themselves, that they're not being targeted. But um, the immigrant community feels that they are being targeted and they feel that the police have a big role in this as well. Well, uh, I think, you know, I mean, we've been talking about it over here because, you know, it's, it's, we, we have beef with the Canadian border. I mean, before we could actually just go to Canada. I mean, it's like you didn't have to go through roadblock number one, roadblock number two, show a passport, have a ID chip. You just go to Canada, Canadian cities. But all of a sudden now, national security state, ICE, all that stuff, paranoia. It's reality that we have to live with. But um, do you want to play some music, Joe? Yeah. I mean, I, I unless you take you, us out here. unless you have something else to say. I just want to encourage all the people around, um, around Washington, Olympia, across the country to continue organizing. Um, we've had successes in Texas. Uh, we got the city council um, to pass a resolution to say that they're going to work with our organization in order to figure out how to better create better working conditions for the construction industry. Um, on a national level, we've had um, OSHA, who's the Occupational and Safety he Health Organization, um, send more investigators in order to ensure worker better working conditions. Um, so if if we can achieve these successes in the state of Texas, which is uh, anti immigrant, racist, pro-business, then it can be achieved here. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm.